Hey, what's up guys? Today I got JT Tran from ABCs of Attraction. If you guys don't know what it is, it's a company that helps Asian guys with dating. Yep. And uh, it does do pickup, which has a <laughs> negative connotation. But I always think it's, it's cool to explore different industries and learn about them and how they work. And I think the underlying mission of ABCs of Attraction is actually kind of beautiful but if you get over the whole pickup artist stuff right i mean unfortunately our industry does have a neg negative connotation but uh, let me put it this way yeah. i am the only dating coach that has ever officiated his own student's wedding all right our guys they go out to date yes some of them want to sleep around but the vast majority want quality girlfriends in their life and yeah. to marry and settle down so yeah. i'm just here to teach them how to be successful in that personal arena yeah i mean this is obviously something you're, you're very passionate about mm -hmm. how long have you been doing this gosh over like 10 years so you've been yeah. teaching guys how to pick up girls and specifically generally like your target audience is asian guys who want to date non-asian girls is that right well it's asian guys in general when it comes to interracial dating i think that I want our Asian students to be well-rounded in whom they date because yeah. there are a lot of Asian guys that feel like they literally cannot date outside of the race okay. because of internalized racism or what Hollywood says yeah. or maybe sexual discrimination that actually happens in the real world. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of my students, they want to end up marrying Asian women. There's, you know, I don't dissuade them from that. But I do want them to have the ability and the confidence to talk to black women, Latin women, white women. Yeah. Like, you know, because Asian girls don't really have that problem. Because yeah, Asian it's girls. It's pretty universal by yeah. default. Right. So, you know, it is not specifically just about white women. It is like giving Asian guys the ability and the confidence to talk to whomever they want. And you're telling me that there's an underlying, there's always an underlying thing that mm -hmm. they're dealing with. They're, you're not just pick, telling them, hey, this is how you sleep with uh, non-Asian <laughs> women, right? right. You're, you're talking about the reason why you're passionate about it is because you're helping them fi fix an underlying issue. Right. The, their unhappiness with women is typically more of a symptom rather than the actual cause. This is especially true with Asians. Like, say when I teach a white guy or black guy, they just might not ha have the technique or know, not know what to say. But with Asian guys, not every Asian guy, obviously, but there is a significant number of Asian guys that literally do not believe that they can. That because of whatever being raised in a maybe a redneck town, like I was raised yeah. in the South in, in Texas, yeah. so I got picked on a lot. I got called gook and chink. Yeah. I was basically essentially told that I was a social second class citizen and it took yeah. a long time to actually believe that I could date outside my, my race, that I was actually worthy of like female affection from other people, that I, that I was not like a second class citizen. And so there are these things, you know, what we call limiting beliefs that some Asian men have where, you know, because of whatever reason, literally do not believe that they can talk to white women or black women. But Maybe. isn't it kind of true though? Like, isn't there like a good number of non-Asian girls who just, I mean, even Asian girls who just don't want to date Asian guys? Like, isn't it, yes. isn't it I mean, like shit on the stick for us Asian yeah. guys? When it comes to dating, realistically, there are multiple studies that do say, as an Asian guy, we are like basically near the bottom of the barrel. Like, I think according to the U.S. Census Bureau, one out of five Asian American guys will never get married. Um, there was this one study that said that when it came to online dating, I as an Asian guy have to make $347,000 more than a white guy. Yeah in order to get the same response rate. Uh, Basically that's saying, my profile picture needs to be a Bentley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what it needs to be in order to, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so realistically, yes, it is absolutely true. But here's the problem, is when Asian guys obsess about that, obsess about the racism, it creates this, this self-fulfilling prophecy where you start destroying your own self-esteem and yeah. self-confidence, where you start to have this belief like, oh, you know, white girls don't like Asian guys, so I'm never gonna talk to an Asian guy, or if I ever talk to a white girl, or if I do talk to a white girl, she's not gonna be receptive, so I'm gonna be, you know, I'm not gonna try as hard, I'm not gonna be as confident, Yeah, yeah. right? So it's true, but in the practical application, it is, at best useless and at worst actually will negatively affect your ability to talk to women. I mean, I know it's definitely true that a lot of Asian guys feel this way. Have you ever been to the subreddit Hapa? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And that's not even like so. There's a subreddit called Hapa, mm -hmm. and it's for half Asians, half white people, which isn't even that bad to be honest. It's not as bad as being a full Asian. <laughs> you want to look at statistically, right? Like being Asian guys, like supposedly the worst. But it's like there, like people basically uh, being insecure because they're half, just because they're half Asian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're not full Asian, and like uh, typically their mother grows up with some hate toward Asians, and so it yeah. passes on to the kids. Anyhow. That's a discussion. <laughs> that's like that's, diving deep that's, into that's, Asian American that's a culture. For another time, yeah. but I do see like, what you mean by there's like, definitely a self fulfilling prophecy. Uh, so, what can guy, Asian guys, short Asian guys like us, do <laughs> about it to stand out and actually do well with the uh, dating? All right. I am five foot five. Like this is as good as it gets. It's not going to get any better than this. Yeah. And I wish I was born tall, dark, and handsome. But I've learned to settle for being short, stunning, and smooth. So I think one of the keys is go big or go home. What I mean by that is when you approach, you know, yeah. let's say a bar or a club, nighttime setting. When you approach, you have to approach with like. A lot of physical confidence. You can't simply kind of like measly, you know, mealy toe your way over. You actually go up there, full body confidence, big smile, and I usually like do what a keynote turn if she's like face away. And it's not intended to like grope or it's not aggressive. It's just like getting her attention. Right. Well, the point is, it's like you just like basically turn her shoulder in order to get her attention. And you, when you open, I prefer. Asian guys learn what I call direct style, where you're not trying to hide your romantic or sexual intent. Okay. You literally go up to a girl and say, I think you're beautiful, I'd like to get to know you, or what I call my kamikaze, which is, this is, and this is perfect for if you are a foreign Asian guy with like an Asian accent, yeah. you go up to a girl and say, you are fucking beautiful. It, it kills, especially if he's a Fabi Asian, if you're a Fabi Asian guy, use this, because the first time we did it was with a Fabi Asian guy, and it blew the six foot tall blonde girl's mind away. Because it like completely like destroyed her heuristic because you know if you look like a stereotype yeah. and you walk like a stereotype, people will treat you like a stereotype. So imagine this, you know, because this is what having this five foot nothing singer porn suit with this Fabi Asian accent. Yeah. He goes up to this six foot tall blonde woman and he literally says it this way: You are fucking beautiful. <laughs> And it worked. It worked. It worked. It was like it was when I was being followed by Asian Week. It was the first time like a newspaper had sent a, a journalist and a photographer to, to observe us. And I'm on the front cover of Asian Week if you get a back edition. Yeah. And there's pictures of me. And then there's a picture of my five foot nothing singer emporian, Fabi Asian Stewart with his Fabi Asian hair, yeah. Fabi Asian teeth, Fabi Asian clothes, yeah. sitting down with a six foot tall blonde woman, cell phone out, holding her hand as he got her number and a date. Right? So direct style really puts yeah. you different, you know, first of all, it separates you and makes you more unique. Yeah, yeah. And it secondly, it makes you a little bit more romantic and sexual, which is incredibly important yeah. if you're short or Asian or just not like a classically like good looking, you know, guy. Does that only apply for like nighttime? Like, yeah, obviously, you, would you want to do that? Like, save your daytime. Like, I'm here trying to. That, sure, sure. I'm here, I'm here at WeWork. I see, <laughs> I see a cute girl sitting there getting a coffee. Am yeah. I gonna go to her and be like, yo, like, be very direct, like, oh, hey, I just you're beautiful. I thought you know. Right. Daytime is a little bit different. You're obviously not gonna approach with as much energy or use as much kino or, or touching, yeah. but direct style will definitely work because no girl wakes up in the morning and says to herself. I don't want to be swept off my feet, right? Mm. So if you can go in and create that kind of magic movie moment. Now you might not go with like the kamikaze opener, but I think that if you go up to her and say like, I really love your outfit or I really love your smile, yeah. like you give off such a good vibe, I want to introduce myself. Or again, just the classic, you know, I saw you across the street and I thought you were really cute and I knew that if I didn't say hi, I'd be kicking myself like all day long. Hi, my name's JT, right? You can do yeah. like that way. And the point is, the great thing about daytime is you get to meet women who are more quote unquote real because they're not putting up a front during the yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. So you can actually meet women um, who you might have a relationship with. like. Just today, actually, one of my students got married to a Latina where when he was in Vegas, he met her at the Las Vegas mall. 
mm. right? He just saw this really cute Latina and he was like shopping and he went up and introduced himself. And now fast forward a couple of years later, they're married. Oh, you, no, that's amazing. Yeah. That's crazy. Were you there on that trip? No, no, but it's like it was after our boot camp. But that's the great thing is like when you invest in a boot camp, you have lifelong skills because, you know, confidence and communication applies not just in dating, but yeah. in, in everything, whether it's sales, marketing, jobs, yeah. you know, career advice, it, like confidence and communication is useful everywhere. Being uh, Asian and shorter, do you feel like we have to do things differently or do we just have to try harder? Or are, are the principles like, say, should like a, a non-Asian guy who's, who's more typically good looking or something, does he do the exact same thing as we would do? Is this like, the, the, do the principles remain the same or is there different things that we need to do as Asian guys? There, the principles basically remain the same, men are men, women are women, yeah. but some of the tactics might be switched up a little bit because, for example, I as a short Asian guy can get away with being a little bit more assertive and physical. Yeah. Yeah. Like I like a maneuver where, you know, I'll, for a picture, I'll literally pick her up in my arms. And remember, I'm a five foot five, like little Asian guy. And this girl might be like some five foot ten, you know, black or white woman. And so again, that sets me off differently. Now, if some six foot tall white or black guy did that, you might scare her. But yeah. I, as a short guy, I can do that because I'm not threatening, right? But at the same time, yeah. you know, another different uh, strategy that that is different from like white versus Asian is. Because I'm not threatening, I'm also not considered sexual, right? Yeah. So I need to be sexual first before I kind of like back off and disqualify so I don't come off as a horn dog. So let's take Mystery for example. He's kind of the grandmaster of pickup where he has this line that he uses um, that works and is based off of reverse psychology. You take away something and it's human nature to want it back, right? And he'll say something like, oh, if I wasn't gay, I would totally make out with you. And it makes a woman like kind of want to pursue him because now he kind of took that off the table, yeah. right? But if I say that, oh, if I wasn't gay, I'd totally make out with you. She goes like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Right. She actually thinks you're legitimately gay. Yeah, it's right. no longer a joke anymore. Right, because yeah. that is one of the stereotypes. Women will draw upon like their mental dating cloud. Mm -hmm. If she's never dated an Asian guy, she'll kind of look at what TV, media, movies say about Asians, what her friends say about Asians. Yeah. And so unfortunately, one of the stereotypes that we Asian men have is like that kind of effeminate vibe, whether or not you give that. And so the, the difference between, major difference between white and say Asian in strategies in that regards is I must be sexualized first. Yeah. I must create that sexual attraction first and then I'll back off. And the point of backing off is to disqualify so that I don't seem like a horn dog. I don't want to seem like desperation because the clone of desperation is the worst stink ever, yeah. right? So I'll be sexual first if you're, you know, this is something that's true if you're short, Asian, old, or just anyone that's not classically good looking, I want to create that sexual attraction first. I want to create that sexual tension yeah. and then back off so that she now pursues me. Because mm -hmm. the seduction, the dating, and the courtship, it's a two way street. It can't simply be me just chasing her. Mm -hmm. I want her to chase me too. Wait, this, this, that's pretty fucking deep, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, what do you have to say to people that? consider this kind of weird or trying too hard. Like, because you went through the whole explanation. I, I don't know why it's necessary, because I'm an Asian guy. Mm -hmm. I, I, get, I get it. it we, we gotta put a little more thought into things. But, you know, there's also a lot of people that think this is very forced. Like, you know, human interaction should be natural, and right. uh, it, it shouldn't be so contrived. Well, here's the thing. I mean, we live in the 21st century, and dating has changed. Mm. I mean, this isn't like, you know, our forefathers, and especially for those uh, who are immigrant families, like Vietnamese, like yeah. my, my stepdad, what could he teach me about dating American girls? I mean, I don't know about your father, but my stepdad knew nothing about American women. So dating is an oral tradition typically passed down from father to son or bigger brother to little brother or uncles, stuff like that. Yeah. And so when our, our fathers come from a different country, don't know the dating, like how were we supposed to learn? Yeah. And this is why so many Asian guys have, you know, not all Asian guys, obviously, but some Asian guys, a significant number, have 
trouble dating in America, even if they were born here. Yeah. And secondly, because dating is different, right, not only from country to country, but because of changing technology, you know, yeah. it's a great thing of gender equality now. Like women can basically act like men if they want to. They can date mm -hmm. around if they want to. And it's God bless them. It's generally on a track of quality of a girl. Wow. You know what? I don't, I, you know, I think women can date and should date whomever they want. Mm -hmm. But because of that difference, yeah. You know, we don't date like in like the 1940s where you have to call up the house and ask the father for permission to take out the daughter. Sure. So we adjust, you know, and, and that's a good thing. Men learning how to adjust to the, you know, the new age of gender equality in dating. You can't simply assume that because because of technology and gender equality that dating is the same for men. Yeah. We have to adjust to that and that's what we're doing. And I know at least for the ABCs, we try to build men who are more like Renaissance men, more holistic where you know we want to enable our guys to pursue the women that they want um, without having to kind of tear other people down in order to do it. Yeah, very necessary. Uh, so you also do boot camps in Europe, you said? Yes. And yes. did you just do one in Australia, is that what you're there for? Yes, yeah. So we, do, we have international programs. How do you find dating over there for Asian guys in Australia and Europe compared to America? Extremely easy. It is like dating on easy mode, like honestly. Um, or is that the proper way? Should we say America's hard <laughs> mode and then that's how things should be? Yeah, the normal mode. The normal I, mode yeah. and America's is hard mode. And, and the reason yeah. that is, yeah. is like, I, I love going to Europe, like, you know, especially in London, like once a year. Yeah. Um, and what I found, and this is what other like English girls have told me, was is there not as racist? Well, it's a it's a class-based society. Like Europe, London is more about class. What class? Are you new money, old money, you know, working class, white collar? But in America, we are very much race-based society. Very, very race -based, yeah. So, whenever I go overseas, m when I talk to women, the first time I ever went was just mind-blowing, right? Yeah. Because the first time I ever went to Europe, and I was going through a backpacking trip with like um, three of my white buddies. One was like a, a male model. One was like a, a bodybuilder. You know, one was like a hip hop dancer. Like just really good looking white guys, right? Yeah. And they had the same amount of romantic success in Europe as they did in America. It was like no different. But like my first night, I ended up hooking up with a French girl and I just kept on having success. And I realized that that I had trained so hard to talk to women, but at the same time, both because of racism and also because of my own limiting beliefs up here that held me back, that once I went to Europe, like all women were, were judging me were on like who I was and my skill set and not my race. That's not saying that Europeans don't have racism, yeah. but nowhere near the nowhere same near. magnitude as America. And like Australia, God, that is like, it's one of the friendliest places. It's like probably the easiest place to approach women ever. It's, it's ridiculously easy. Yeah. No, I experienced the same thing. I've been traveling mm -hmm. a lot. I just spent a month in Europe and two months in the Philippines. And I gotta tell you, it, like, when you grew up in LA as an Asian guy, mm -hmm. and then you go to like somewhere else, you think, what? <laughs> like you, you feel like you really step into another, another, another world. Yeah, you said it was like kind of mind altering for you. It was very. I think it's a necessity if mm -hmm. you're an Asian guy who has self esteem issues. You have to spend a month. Or yeah, it, it, it's, it'll be like the first time you're gaming on normal mode. A normal right? mode, because yeah. yeah, I, I thought gaming was so like dating was so hard. Like, yeah. like, the dating is so hard, and then we're so accustomed to that as being so hard. And I, I would say, man, going to the Philippines was the best decision yeah. in my life. I mean, that's why we have the Euro Tour where we take a couple of our students over to Europe for two weeks so they can learn what it's like to game and just socialize where race doesn't hold you back. Yeah. Women judge you based off who you are and not your race. And sometimes, it's still, it's still rare, but sometimes you actually have an advantage as an Asian guy where the European women, they think of you as like, you know, an exotic piece of like male meat where they, they just lust after you. Yeah, you know, it's still rare, but it's actually there. And it's, it's, it's an incredibly empowering feeling having a woman just desire you. Because unless you're, again, here in America, like I'm sure, I'm just like at best average looking and no woman looks at this and desires this. Like I have to convince them with my personality and charm. But sometimes overseas, they, they, they want you because, you know, because race isn't holding them back. It's very interesting because 
I think Asian girls in America experience an advantage, right? Statistically, and they can just date anybody who they want. Mm -hmm. so for them, it's very easy. Uh, they don't really have to put much thought into it. But I think the world is always fair. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how, what, you, what your philosophies are, but I always think the world is fair. So yeah, Asian male dating sucks in America, but when you're Asian male in Southeast Asia, and including Singapore, you are actually the pinnacle. You suddenly become the, the most, the pinnacle. And I even talk, I even asked them like, out of like, would you prefer Asian American, European Asian? Or Australian Asian, right? Hmm. They always say American Asian. I don't know. Why, I don't, I'm not particularly particularly sure why, but Asian American is like the most attractive thing combination you could be when you visit Southeast Asian countries. Even hmm. more so than being a, a white guy, like a plain really? white Asian. Really? Okay. Yeah. I did not know that. I mean, I know that you know I've, I've been back to like Vietnam, and I taught in like Japan, yeah. and so definitely you know there is that American kind of aspect. If you're from America, I think that just kind of gives you value. Yeah. Um, maybe not nowadays with you know the Trump regime, <laughs> like the ugly American, but in general, I think yeah. that as an American, we definitely can get that advantage. We would, we, we, we can't get that. So that's why I think the world's always fair. Like we have a tough time here, but you go, you go to anywhere else in the world and it's actually really, really nice. Yeah, I mean, if you can get good here in America, you'll be good anywhere. Exactly, yeah, yeah. All right, JT, dang, that, that was a really fun conversation to have. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it was a little different for your audience, but hopefully they, they learned something from it. Well, you know, I always keep my videos kind of focused and I actually, to be honest, I always kind of dabble in like the dating stuff, but people don't really like my dating advice, to be honest, no. stuff, I don't know. I either keep it too real or people just don't agree with it. Right. Yeah, yeah, but I always think it's fun to talk about it and I, it was cool that you reached out to me, so I definitely wanted to talk to you about a video and I was very interested in, in why people take your boot camps and like the psychology mm -hmm. behind it and also like I'll, after this, I'll talk to you about the business side of it, like how it works. So I think it's cool that you can run a business from your YouTube channel and it has like 40,000 subscribers, but yeah. you run a, a very serious business, so I think it's really cool. Thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it. And make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too. Every Monday, we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right, we've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check 